Didn't see you there. Ha! <laughs> how, how many times have you seen a video start like that? Well, how about this? I'm gonna give you a real joke. How do you piss off your director, your script supervisor, your DP, your wardrobe, and set deck? All by using one of these. The answer after, after this intro. You'll laugh. Trick question. There's a lot of easy ways, but by far the easiest way is by putting all those people with all those jobs looking at one monitor. When I'm not out there, um, you know, aspiring to be a master cinematographer, a, an artist, my broke ass is usually out there making money as an AC, which stands for assistant camera. One of those jobs is building monitors, and let me tell you, I've built quite a bit. So, the reason why we need, well, so many monitors is because we all have a different job involving said monitors. With a lot of professional cinema cameras, they usually have a viewfinder and a very, very small monitor. A good example would be any Ari Alexa or any Ari viewfinder, really. Yeah, the monitor's there. It's fine, sure. You don't really need it to light a scene or anything like that, but it sure helps. You see, having a tiny monitor like that, everything looks kind of already good, already perfect. It looks nice, it's small. You don't see any of the details that you really should be paying attention to, which is why any YouTuber out there, an artist out there, prefer to have their stuff viewed on an iPhone. A 720p quality video will look better on your iPhone because it's smaller, it's compressed. When using a large monitor, maybe not this one, we'll get to why. <laughs> but when using a large monitor, it blows things up, right? Suddenly you can see details that you wanna pay attention to and things are sharper. That's why a monitor can be essential for any film set. But what if you have a specific job? Well, let me tell you something. Like I said, when I'm out there be doing my AC stuff and not uh, cinematography, I generally do carry a giant monitor with me. It's a uh, small HD 702 Bright. I'll bring it out in a moment. The reason why that monitor is so important to me is because when I'm working and the cinema camera doesn't have Cinetape, Cinetape is, uh, the best way to describe it is an IR sensor that tells you how far your subject is through the camera itself. It's weird and it makes your job super cool and when you're ACing without a monitor, ooh! I don't have a lot of those huge gigs where I have the privilege of using Cinetape. When I don't, I have my trusty monitor with me. And with those tools I use, eh, I like to play around and I like to use my, uh, my focus peaking whenever I'm really insecure. Some lenses are super soft and I need that sometimes. My eyes, my peepers ain't so good. I'm 27, I'm going blind. When I was starting off as a director, a lot of cool tools that, well, my small HD brought to me was tools such as false color. False color, what it does is that it grabs the image that you're looking at and put this disgusting color uh, palette all over it, those colors dignify how much light there is in your scene. For example, if you were to grab this footage and you put the false color filter over this, I should be within the green zone. This, this should be clear. The lens is set at a 2.8 and I damn made sure that this was at a 2.8. Let's see, am I good? <laughs> Got him. Should be fine, right? But when I was starting off, I didn't know exactly how to separate subject from the scene. So having a false color comes in, is just super helpful, okay? <laughs> so another beautiful gift that the small HD provides is for me to play around with LUTs. I can create a LUT, download it onto a small SD card, apply it to my small HD, and from there just apply it to my scene. So now as a DP, I can light the scene with the look that I want or the look that the director wants. Let's say that you're a director and you're ooh, a dedicated one. You may want a monitor that just has the look and that's it. Whenever you're directing, you're, you become so focused on your scene because you're an artist, you care about what you're trying to do and you want everything to be not perfect, but your vision. Whenever you have a monitor with just a look and that's it, clear picture, it gives you a little bit more of an idea of what your scene will end up looking like. Same thing if your wardrobe. If your DP decides to say, hey, okay, let's light this scene for this mood because that's a director wants. As wardrobe, that's something you want to pay attention to. So you may also want to corral to a monitor that has that look, color, and shadows and everything get affected by that. So that's why, that's another reason why you would want to pay attention to those. And that's another monitor that you may potentially need to bring on set. 
If it's a giant set, it, it was one of those like multi-million sets, everyone has a monitor practically. <laughs> or a lot of times in my jobs, uh, the script supervisor will have a monitor dedicated to them with the frames per second that is being used, what lens, and what ND filters are being used. Here in Florida, if I'm in AC, I'm doing like three other jobs, unfortunately, and I just don't have time to take notes. So a lot of the times my scripts will, you know, give me a hand and really help me out, <laughs> which I appreciate. I'm not lazy, I swear. But yeah, those are details that through the camera can transmit to your monitor and help you with your job. So all these monitors, right, with all these tools for a young filmmaker, if you're, if you're starting out and whatnot, th th this is great. This is really good for you, right? Because a lot of these monitors have tools that can help you out. So let's talk about those tools. For that, I'm gonna bring up three other monitors, but this little guy is already out, so I'm gonna talk about him or her. It's blue, so like, is that like, <laughs> like, I don't know. The newer seven inch monitor that you can find on Amazon for like, I don't know, 50, less than a hundred bucks, I bet. This was one of my very first monitors. I bought this thing out of sheer desperation because I just wanted a monitor to myself and just use it. I just wanted to see the frame so much that I went cheap, bought this guy and noticed like, oh, the aspect ratio on this thing is weird. Everybody looks long and gross. Doesn't mean that it has its useful tools. For example, this monitor here has a check field. I don't know exactly what it is, but it turns your footage blue, mono, off, red, and green, all RGB. It also has focus assist, which is pretty good for a cheap camera. It also has a marker for your crosshair and for your safety margins. And it has a couple other safety margins, such as 80, 90% and 17 by nine, which I honestly wouldn't trust it. It's very inaccurate. That's the newer monitor here. Pretty nice, pretty cool. Has HDMI, AV, headphone jack, OSD controller, don't trust it, and DC 12 volt in and out. But let's say that you have a budget and you, are, you really want to treat yourself. So let me get this guy out of the way. Reach in my toy box. What do we got? Oh no. Will it flash it? It won't flash it. But this is the Portkeys BM5. What does the BM stand for? I don't ask. The reason why I love this monitor so much is one, super small, only five inches. And that's perfect for a camera such as the Blackmagic Pocket Simmer camera. You see, what's so special about this monitor is that it has built-in controls to control your camera. This one was uh, specifically for the Z Cam, but there's a Bluetooth module out there that allows us to control our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And another great thing about this is all these buttons here are programmable. If you want waves, if you want your, your color festival, if you just want LUTs, all these crazy things, put them in here and program the button and bada boom, you're set. What are, what are you talking about this? This guy ain't got that. I just see footage and I see it stretched. But I was pretty happy with it still. So. <laughs> I still loved it. <laughs> so another cool thing that I really like about this guy is that it has an HDMI in. Okay, cool, whatever. What if I want to share this feed through a wireless transmitter? Well, it has SDI in and out. Teradex like the, how can I say this? They're, they're, they're mainly for SDIs. Their HDMI stuff works, it's all right. Usually wanna use SDI. Now I can shoot and see everything for myself, but through a wireless transmitter, everyone else can see it 50 miles away and contact me whether they like the footage or not. <laughs> That's not really how it works. It's like 500 meters for a cheap one. But regardless, if you spend a decent amount of money, you get decent amount of tools and toys for it, which like I said, just makes your experience as a filmmaker a lot easier and better. You know what? I bet you could still play Smash in both of these. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can still play Smash. But let's say you want to play Doom at 60 frames per second. That's when you want to spend a little bit more money, you know, you, you, you grab something like this guy. This guy right here is my pride and joy. I love this monitor. It's the small HD 702 Bright. And I believe it's discontinued when I researched this guy a little bit more after I bought it. The amazing thing about the small HD is that it doesn't want to turn on. Hey, okay. <gasps> I guess this battery's dead. I just love this thing so much. It gives you a view of the mountains in case your footage is crap, but that's okay. <laughs> the key features that I absolutely love about this guy is that how flexible this guy is. And I don't mean like, oh, you can bend it and crap like that. It's just the tools that it provides for you. Imagine this guy put a lot better. <laughs> It doesn't have the controls. That's fine. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make, but it has LUT control. It has 
focus peaking. It has personally the best uh, false color spectrum out there ever. So the reason why this guy is so, so, so precious to me is that not only is super flexible, but it's also hyper bright. The reason why it has bright in the name is because it advertises itself as, oh, a monitor that you don't need a hood for. What? Are you stupid? You know how bright that monitor has to be? Well, I'm the stupid one because it is and it works, it works really, really well. For someone who, I mean, it's Florida heat, I'm constantly outside, the sun is constantly on my back, it's perfect for that. But another thing is, is that it has both SDI and HDMI out. It's just so perfect, and it also has like a small like mini USB for like upgrades. If, if this thing gets a, a firmware upgrade, you could, you could just do that. I'm probably behind on it, but that's fine. That's okay. So I guess the moral of the story that I'm trying to tell you here is I'm not trying to sell you monitors, I'm not. These are all our monitors, and I love all of them. I love all of them equally. I love this guy too, I do, I'm sorry. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to get to is monitors can be essential. Monitors are extremely important. This monitor in particular has helped me greatly. Find a monitor that helps you. If you're a DP, you might want something nice, something, something like this with decent false color and decent tools for you to practice cinematography with. And at the end of the day, if this is the one that helps you the most, good. You have a tool that you'll forever use. So what kind of tools do you like to use? Do you have any monitors that you prefer? Or, or do you not care about monitors? <laughs> or are you just not into them? Do you prefer not to have a giant bulky seven inch monitor to your face while you're shooting? Thank you so much to the patrons who have supported us, who keep on giving us their, their beautiful time and allowing us to make videos like these. If you want to join the Patreon, please, please do so, links are below. We have many tiers and well, we like to help out anyone. We just like to help you out, okay? We have a Discord in which you can join once you join our Patreon and we play games with y'all, we we do uh, streams and, and and we just we just overall love you. So if you decide to support us, thank you so much. If not so, well, I'll try next week, okay? <laughs> if you find this video useful, please let us know in the comments below. If you wanna see more videos like this, let us know, we're constantly on the comments. We're very visual on the comments. We try to respond to everybody and, and talk to everyone and you know get everyone's input i'm very self-conscious <laughs> that's why so please let us know if you find it useful and if so well welcome to the club thank you for subscribing and i'll see you in the next video now if you don't mind i'm going to